I don't believe I've reviewed an EO fauna before. The reason is that in the past, I always seem to get them way after they come out in the West. So it's quite a surprise to get one about the same time as many of you guys this time. And of course, being a T-Rex in 1 to 35 and from Eofauna, and the pedigree behind the Eofauna team hardly needs vetting. So it promises to be very good. Now this model, unlike their previous Giganotosaurus, with much to be desired in colour and application, has taken a more eye-catching turn. And you can see how vibrant it looks. It actually gives me healer monster vibes. Yellow and black, one of my favourite combinations, so that's a bonus for me. T-Rex is generally estimated to be 12 to over 13 metres. However, this is based on SU or FMNH PR2081. Now SU measures about 12.35 metres or 40.5 feet along the centre. I estimate the through centre of this model to be very roughly 35 centimetres or 13.8 inches, making it indeed very close to 1 to 35. So let's take a closer look. Eofauna has given this T-Rex a very dark, almost a black face, and I love it. Now black faces in dinosaurs always give me real badass vibes. And while looking undifferentiated at first, there's plenty of detail that's easily discerned. Now real animals have interesting textures, but they aren't always coloured for your viewing pleasure. That you have to look a bit harder makes it even more like a real animal to me. You can also see that some of the yellow seems to show through, which is a nice look. In detail, even through the dark, there is much to discover and savour. The lacrimal and nasal crests. The maxillary area. The large labial scales, of course. And especially around the eye and behind it. Now that's possibly my favourite part. The jaw articulates, and here I'll digress a bit. Everyone knows T-Rex, and I've yabbered on about sciencey topics in other T-Rex videos, so I won't say too much on that this time. However, an interesting point I'll just get out of the way. Cullen Natal in 2023 wrote this very well-known paper on theropod facial reconstruction. In the supplementary, they describe their process, and I talk about that in my Cameron T-Rex review, so check that out for more detail. But of relevance to us today is the idea that in a real animal, soft tissue coverage means that a lot less teeth might actually be seen even in the open mouth. And here in this Mark Witten work, the lowest 25% of the tooth crown are covered by labial scales and also gingival tissue. In Varanids like the Komodo dragon, you might not see them at all. And this seems to be the idea in this Eofauna. This is very unusual, and from a sales perspective, maybe even risky. But trust Eofauna to come up with something in keeping with the science. Another interesting thing is the mechanism of the articulation. In other models, the jaw very clearly and obviously looks like a hinge. You can see how the broader mandible envelops the neck. In this eofauna, 
the neck actually kind of retracts into the throat, so it looks almost like a piston. Also, thanks to the colour, the articulation, for some reason, for me anyway, doesn't jar as much. You'll see, however, that viewed inferiorly, the lower jaw looks a lot narrower. A very interesting choice. Most impressive of all, I believe this is the first lipped T-Rex with near-perfect mouth closure. Except for the tiniest hint of a gap on the right, Look at how wonderfully this shows the purpose of lips in the first place. Now inside, the detail is also very nice. You see the tongue, the textures, the teeth, and the paint complexity. the coanal openings. Now when this image dropped, some of you asked me if I'd still get this T-Rex, and you even expressed a disappointment. I've always felt that just one image, from what might be an unflattering angle, is always too early to feel badly about it. I'll say yes, the teeth have blunt tips, but seriously, at normal viewing distances, you couldn't even see them clearly. And because so much is hidden by soft tissue, it's not obvious. And as for the rest, the proportions are really as expected. The arms, for example, are sufficiently small to make me happy. And here, no clown feet is always good, despite the fact that this balances very nicely. We now have enough T-Rex fossils to know there is some variety in shape and proportion, so for me at least, nothing jumps out. Except of course, the colour. Now, if you've been pampered by PNSO or Haolongku and are used to a certain level of complexity, you won't get it here. Now that's not to say that the paint application is bad. The colour contrasts are very sharp, simply because of the pattern. And in some areas, like here in the feet, you'll see colours infused within the dark. And up here in the dorsal view, you can see how there are subtle transverse bands running down the back. It's just a different aesthetic. There's less subtlety of blends, but still some complexity. I talked about the scale detail you have to look hard to see in the head, and this continues here in the body, and that really sells this as a realer animal to me. And the other thing as we do a once-over is that the detail isn't as obvious as in some of the PNSOs or the Haolongkus, but they're there. And you have the Giganotosaurus, you know that Eofauna has massively improved in this. Again, you have to look a bit harder, but you'll see there's very fine detail throughout the model. And actually, strictly speaking, at 1 to 35, you really shouldn't see much detail. And in some animals, it might actually be smooth. So while less satisfying, Eofauna actually is writer in their smoothness than many other companies. Again, the arms are pleasingly small. An Eofauna, unsurprisingly, has the relative finger proportions correct. The hind limbs are also very nicely muscled and detailed.
The feet aren't oversized, and while the toes may look big, it's very pleasing from the top here to realize it's actually the soft tissue spread around the actual toes that gives you that impression. And the bottom of the feet aren't neglected as well. Most easily discerned is the detail in the underside as we slowly track downwards. Now I don't know if it's intentional, but I feel perhaps a little bit more paint in this area to consolidate the yellow over the darker underlayer will look better. And to finish off, the tail. The pose also deserves mention. It's definitely different without the typical aggression seen in many T-Rex models. With the mouth open, yes indeed, you have that aggression if you wanted to. The upward tilt of the head suggests it's snapping at a pterosaur or perhaps a territorial declaration. But close the mouth and here you get a sense of curiosity, an inquisitiveness, in fact reminding me of the only thing I liked about the dog-like Collecti Megalosaurus. There's also a lateral bend in the neck, and a bit of a sideways tilt in the head, lending just that extra suggestion of natural movement and behaviour, just wonderful. And as I said, it stands, although it depends on the surface you're on. Now just for safety, we have a real base that actually secures through a hole and peg system I much prefer, kind of like the old Star Wars figures. And even though the base looks very basic, it actually has very nice detail as well as paint application on it. Just a very welcome addition, and I'm very happy with it. Now for the comparisons, and really they're just a few obvious suspects to have in the lineup. Now first of all, here's the Wilson T-Rex. Then we have the Reebok Kiss. Now, this one was a real breakthrough in giving us lips, although in mine, it fails to close. And here you can see how the mouth closure is handled. You also see just how perfect the Eofauna looks in comparison. And I've talked about the width differences in the head. We then go to the Cameron T-Rex, PNSO's updated skin aesthetic. A wonderful representation of the unlipped camp. I think these two make the perfect pair to show both sides of the lip argument.
So that's it. And really, I can't believe how much I like this Eofauna T-Rex. Every really good model of T-Rex has added a little something the previous ones didn't have. Wilson was one of the nicest T-Rex sculpts ever seen, with touches that added realism. Then Rebor came along and gave us lips. Then Cameron came along, lipless, but updated with PNSO's improved fineness of detail. And now Eofauna, with much of the teeth hidden. I found their previous Giganotosaurus underwhelming, which added to the shock and surprise I had when I received this. The colour, the execution of lips, and the perfect seal. The pose, and a very nice base to ensure safety. These are all factors that combine to form what for me is one of my favourite models, not just of T-Rex. And I think all but the most nitpicky will be very happy with it. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video.